Well, it's great to be in God's house today. It's great to look out and see each one of you here today. If you're visiting with us, we're honored that you've come to join us. I know some has come uh, for the baptism this morning. We thank you for coming and supporting Dennis this morning, and I'll present him here in just a moment. Uh, but I do want to ask you to be praying for uh, the White family. Um, Denver White, I think he used to be a member here several years ago, uh, passed away, and his visitation will be down here at Brendan Mountain Chapel Tuesday from 12 to 2. That's Denver White, and then the service will be at 2 o'clock down here at Brendan Mountain Chapel. So uh, put that on your prayer list and your opportunity to go for the visitation. A few of you knew um, Barbara Piper. She was a member at Humphrey Park Baptist Church where we came from. Uh, she passed away this morning, so let's do remember Barbara's uh, family. I know a few of you knew her, so be praying for them. Uh, there's a lot of things going on, and we're so excited that God's been blessing us, and uh, we've started a lot of programs that's been going on. You know, there's a lot of things going on around Brandon Mountain Baptist Church. Maybe you're looking at some places to get plugged into, and we'd honor, honor, be honored if you would come and join us for a lot of the things that's going on. In fact, this week... Uh, the men's ministry will be kicking off here at 6.30 back in the fellowship hall. Uh, we just sort of bring a, a, a little food together and fellowship together and have a little devotion and just uh, uh, come together. So come and join us, guys, uh, this Thursday at 6.30. The ladies, uh, they have a, uh, they're a little bigger group than we are. Uh, they're a little friendlier to be around, I guess. But they, they, uh, they've got a big... Uh, thing this Thursday as well at Rolo's Cafe in Huntsville on Airport Road. Uh, if you're interested in going to get with Janice Sailor here and let her know so she can make reservations. How many of y'all normally have? About 25. So uh, you can come and join them. And We can't do that many because I, I can't let them get close to my plate, those guys. They, they get into my food. And tonight, we've uh, started a new Sunday school class. In fact, our Sunday school it just continues to grow. If you'd like to join us for Sunday school at 9 o'clock, I invite you to come and join us. The new class that started just not long ago, the young adult class, they're having a dinner hamburger hot dog this afternoon uh, will be provided. And if you want to bring some sides for that, you come and join them this evening at 6 o'clock. Um, Again, if you're visiting today, we're honored, uh, honored that you're here. If you'd like to give us a record of your visit, there's a tear-off on your bulletin. Or if you're a visitor or not, if you've got a prayer request, uh, if you want to put that in there, uh, you just give us that request, and we'll be praying for those uh, this week. Uh, any other announcements at this time? I'm going to ask Dennis if he'd come on up for just a moment. Dennis, if you'll come up. Dennis has been coming to church here uh, just about ever since I, I've, I've been here. And uh, he, he's been uh, growing uh, in the Lord. And I, Friday he said that uh, he run Clay down and said that he's ready to get saved. He's ready to get saved. And uh, he's been in that process for some time. You know, it's kind of like a child being born a day in the womb. and uh, But he, he came out and came uh, public. Uh, Friday. He said, now I want to be saved. He got saved. He said, I want to be baptized. So he wants to follow through through believer's baptism. And this morning, we'd like to baptize him. What is the wishes of the church? Larry? Larry moves that we accept him. We'll have a second. Have a second up here. All, how do you say amen in Spanish? Amen. Amen? <laughs> amen. <laughs> All in favor of saying Amen, right? Amen. All right. Any opposed? By nay. How do you say nay in Spanish? I have no clue. <laughs> we, we're not going to let them nay, are we? We're not going to. All right. I'm going to let Dennis go back. I'm, I, and after the service, I'm going to ask him to meet me out uh, in the foyer. And you can come by and let him know after the service, after the baptism, how much you appreciate him, how much you're going to support him in your prayer. We love you, brother. And you just go have a seat. We're going to have prayer in just a minute. Thank you. Let us begin our service this morning with prayer. Dear Lord, we're so thankful. Lord, we, we're already celebrating you this day. Those that's come to worship you this day, I pray, Lord, that you'll touch their hearts. I pray, Lord, that you'll meet the, 
the needs in each and every heart here today. Fill the void this, this life can put into our lives. And I thank you for Dennis this morning. I pray that you'll bless him and his uh, uh, commitment and his new birth, his new life. I pray that you'll be with his baptism. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with the music this morning. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with each one that has a part. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be with each and every one of us as we come together to worship you. We take of the Lord's Supper this morning. Lord, we just want to honor you with our presence today, with our service today. And I pray, Lord, that you fill our cups and bless us this day. In Jesus' wonderful, glorious name, we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good morning. This announcement is for all of the VBS workers. If you're helping in Vacation Bible School, just wanted to remind you that we are having a workshop this coming Saturday in the Fellowship Hall from 10 to 12 in the morning, okay? So this coming Saturday, May 6th. Oh, Vacation Bible School is at night, okay. Um, our dates for Vacation Bible School this year June 4th will be the kickoff. That's a Sunday afternoon. We'll have the blow-ups and the games, and it's like a royal fair. And so that'll be our kickoff to get everybody registered. And then Monday at 6 o'clock in the evening is when we'll start the regular vacation Bible school. It will go from 6 to 8.30 on June 5th through the 9th. And then we'll have our commencement service on that Friday evening. So just so you can plan ahead. So workshop this coming Saturday, May 6, 10 o'clock in the fellowship hall. Now, let's stand together. We want to sing praises to the Lord because he has done gloriously.
Det var en vent. So, uh, <coughs> to tell you a little bit more about Dennis, Friday, he come to me at school. So to let you, and to give you more confidence that God's not dead in our school, he's still there. I'm very proud of Dennis, and it's an honor and privilege to get to baptize you now. So today, I baptize you, Dennis, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 <laughs> Stand with me once again. We'll sing in the sweet by and by. <coughs> so much for the blessings that you've given us, Lord, and we know that there is great and awesome power in the blood of the Lamb, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord, and we come to the time 
to break bread and give a little bit back to what you've given us, Lord. We pray that you take it to further your kingdom. Bless the giving and the giver. Amen. time of our service so if you'd stand with me we're going to sing one verse of Jesus hold my hand and then we're going to take a few moments to greet one another while the children go to children's church and then we'll sing the last verse before Mylon comes to preach Jesus hold my hand
Let us pray over our pastor this morning. Father God, we come to you, Lord, just to uh, expecting something good, Father. Always, you always have something good for us. Right now, I ask that you uh, bless our pastor, Lord, that you would uh, give him the words to say, God, straight from your heart. Lord, be with him and, and just, uh, Lord, if there's one today that uh, needs to come to you, Father, let it be the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you join me this morning in the book of Psalms, chapter 51. Psalms 51, entitled the message this morning, Broken. Uh, I guess you can see at the front, we're preparing to take of the Lord's Supper this morning. And before we take the Lord's Supper, I think we need to uh, examine our, our lives because it is an example of Jesus going to the cross, giving of his life, shedding his blood for you and I. He did that as a, as a ministry. He did that as a mission. He did that for you and I. He did that out of love. And uh, while he was yet doing that, a lot of people were distracted, unfocused, and wasn't really on board with what, what Jesus was doing when, when he came. They weren't on board. And I really believe God's Word tells us a lot of people aren't on board when it comes to that's partaken of the Lord's Supper. I think many of us aren't prepared as we should. David, it says in verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. The bones that you have broken may rejoice. David recognized that he wasn't where he needed to be. David recognized his life wasn't fulfilling the purpose that God intended for his life to do. He examined himself, and he found himself wanting. The Lord tells us that we need to examine ourselves before we take the Lord's Supper. Let me read a little passage uh, from the New Testament. It said that where Jesus came that same night, and he, and he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke that bread and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my, in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Here he is partaking of the Lord's Supper at the Passover feast. He said, you do this to remember me. And he says, often as you eat and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. And we just had a, a choir sing a song about he's coming, isn't he? The king, he's coming. How will he find us? Therefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself so that he himself shall eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. He said, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you. Many sleep, many are even dead because they partake of the Lord's Supper unworthily. So we must examine ourselves today. And of course, we look at David this morning. David was living under the law rather than grace. We're under grace here today. But yet we still, even under grace, we have to examine ourselves to be what we ought to be. It talks and uses the word broken. Well, usually when things are broken, they lose their value. That's in our society. If I were to say my, my truck is broke, what does that mean? It, it's got a problem. The value of my truck goes from here to hear. When I first bought this truck, I, I may have shared this. I, I was pretty proud to have a brand new truck, you know. Debbie's real good to me. She let me have a new truck. I was driving down the road, had 5,000 miles on that truck. Now, I don't want to tell you what we had to pay for that truck. It's unbelievable what you have to pay for a truck these days. But I had me a new truck. People say, man, that's a nice truck, preacher. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Pretty proud. I had 5,000 miles on it. Still smelt new. 
I was going down the road, and all the lights started flashing on that thing. I mean, it started jumping up and down. And, and, I, and, and man, I, I did the best I can to pull it into the dealership and end up having lifters went out in it. The engine. That brand new truck wasn't so nice anymore. People would see me a week later. Where's your truck, preacher? It's in the shop. They saw me a month later. Where's your truck, preacher? It's in the shop. I wasn't so proud of that truck. It had lost some value. You know why I told them? They said, preacher, we're going to have to take the motor out of your truck, and we're going to have to put new lifters in. So I said, why don't you just give me a new truck? Oh, we can't give you a new truck. I said, I don't want a truck with bad engine in it. You know, when things get broken, it starts losing value. It starts losing purpose. Not, not, it, we do that with vehicles. Uh, uh, a glass. When you have a glass and you drop it and it breaks and shatters everywhere, it's lost its value. It's losing its purpose. I know as a kid, one time I, I broke uh, one of my mother's lamps. She's gone to work. We, it was really my brother. No, it was me. We broke it. But you know what? I've seen them do uh, commercials on television. You, you can take that little old super glue and just glue them back together, and you'll never know the difference. They're lying. Because <laughs> Mama knew that something had happened to that lamp. I mean, we tried to fix it, but it didn't have the value that it had before because it was broken. That's the way it is in society that we know of. But God's society, brokenness is where it's at. Brokenness is where it's at. That, in fact, being broken brings value in God's eyes. Brokenness brings value in God's eyes. This is the time of year. Many of you have done started putting out gardens and stuff. What you do, you break the ground to put the seeds in it so the seeds can grow. If you don't break the ground, of course, we know this parable of the seeds being sown. It's got to get down in the soil. Unfortunately, I believe the Word of God has been preached. I believe the Word of God has been read, but I think a lot of times the Word of God has not been penetrated because the ground has not been broken. David was broken. David felt that his life had no purpose. David had been there before where he had the blessings and anointing of God upon him. Seeing God had blessed his family, blessed everything that he had done in his life. God, he blessed him, but he's not there now. He was broken. He was undone. And we partake of the Lord's Supper. We need to start understanding who we are. God's got to break us. I want to share with you a little bit more about it. Let me share a little bit of what David said in verse 1. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out, my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I have was shapen in iniquity in sin did my mother conceive me? David is acknowledging that he is a sinner. He's broken. A lot of people recognize who they are. It's important we come to the grip to who we really are. The prodigal son did that, didn't he? The prodigal son got out. He went out in the world and he lived a, 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 a very unrighteous life lost all that he had, and he found himself in a pig pen, and he got to thinking back, back when he was in his father's house, how better off he was. He said, I want that again. I'd like to go back. I'd be better off as a servant in my dad's house rather than here where I'm at today. He wanted to be reinstated. He wanted to be restored back to his place. God sometimes had to break us to come to that point. 
We get in, uh, in, in churches today. We, we get in a worship today, and we're not broken. God can't use us. We can find many people in God's Word that w- didn't get broken. They, they become very proud. God can't bless us when we're proud. God blesses us when we're broken. We don't need to be hard-hearted. We need to be broken-hearted. We say we're doing the work of God, but what kind of heart do we have today? Are we really following God's word? Are we broken like we should? In the Old Testament, Saul, God told him to do something, and he went and did the majority of it, but not all of it, didn't he? And and, and when he was asked, did you do what you were told to do? I did it. A lot of people today will say we're doing what God wants us to do because we're at church today. We're not heathens. We're at church today. We're worshiping God. But where is our heart? Is our hearts broken today? Are we making ourselves ready to take of the Lord's Supper? Or do we find ourselves like David? That we're not ready today. He can, he honestly says, I'm not ready. I'm a sinner. I need the Lord to blot out my sin. I need the Lord to Blot out my hard heart. He tried to cover his sins, didn't he? How many people you think go to church Sunday after Sunday covering up sin? We do. But the Lord knows where they're at. Not only does the Lord know where they're at, we know where they're at. So the first point, David was broken. But I want you to notice also, David had a desire. He had a desire to be what? God wanted him to be. Once again, verse 6, it says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part. In the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. The Lord has a desire as well. Do you know that God has a desire this morning in my life and for your life? God has a desire. What What does he want the outcome to be today? He knows who have prepared ourselves, who have let him broken our hearts and, and, and showed us our sins and we confessed our sins. Our desire is to take the Lord's Supper worthily. You know what my wife does at our house? And she'll do it this afternoon when it comes time to eat. Time to wash up. She says that every time. Time to wash up. Well, you know, we've been taking the Lord's Supper. It's time to wash up, isn't it? You know what, 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 what a lot of people say? Well, why did it this morning? You shake anybody's hand at church? Yes. But they washed theirs too, didn't they? I had uh, pastored over in Huntsville, and we had some special needs guys, and the blessed heart, they, they, they was anointed of God. They were special. But I'd watch them while I was preaching, and I mean, one of them would be picking his nose up to his eyeball. And he, boy, as soon as church is over, he got that hand out, and I'm thinking... So after church, you know what I did before I went to eat? I washed my hands. I done know my hand been places it didn't need to be. We ought to know what's in our hearts. God, God shows us. We need to get our hands clean. We need to get our hearts clean. We need to get our lives clean. That's God's desire. That's God's directions for our lives. He has a desire today. And David had a desire. He said, purge me with hyssops in verse 7 and show, and, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He knew what God could do. He knew God could clean him up. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. I want to be able to rejoice today. I want to be able to take the Lord's Supper today. I, I want to be able to leave here rejoicing and knowing that I my desires have been met. So I'm walking with the Lord, and the Lord is walking with me. He says, hide thy face 
from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. He said, I'm ashamed of my sin. I want to get rid of my sins. I don't want to hide them. I don't want to cover them up. I want them gone out of my life, out of your sight, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from my, thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy, my, thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. That means willing spirit, uh, ready spirit. God wants to do that for us today. God wants to put us back together. A lot of times God has to break us to put us back to where we belong. Has God been breaking us? Has God been doing things in our life, trying to get our attention? He has the desire for us to be restored to that joy of salvation. Let me say something else today. David had a desire. God had a desire. But Satan had a desire as well. God's desire was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everybody to come to repentance, but Satan, he wants to sift you as wheat. He wants to snatch away the Word of God. He doesn't want the Word of God to, to continue to grow in your life. I, I, I'm still so proud of Dennis this morning. Just proud of you, buddy. You know, I asked Clay, I said, tell, y'all tell me a little bit about what, what happened at school? He said, well, Dennis has been wanting to get saved, thinking about getting saved. And you know when he got time? He didn't even wait to come to Sunday, did he? He did it on Friday. At all the places at school. Satan didn't want him to do that. His desire, his all the things you've been hearing him back in the youth group, how you've been hearing in the sanctuary, all these things you've been hearing about the Word of God, and it's been working in your life. Satan wants to pluck it out. He wants to take it out. I know when I wanted to get saved, you know, in, in church like this, when I was being convicted of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden Satan said, well, look, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. Folks, it's not time to do it later. Now's the time. Now's the time. We've been thinking to take the Lord's Supper. We don't wash up after we eat. We wash up before we eat. We prepare ourselves. So God had a desire. David had a desire. Satan had a desire. Oh, there's so many people I look in God's word that had a desire for a better thing in their life. The man at the pool, he, he, was, he was crippled and, and waiting for the stirring of the water. And he said, you know, what are you doing? He said, man, I, I have a desire to be made whole, but I just can't do it. He wanted it. I think of the, the woman at the well when Jesus came. I think she had a desire for a better life. She was waiting for the Messiah to come. I believe Legion, when they found him, when Jesus found him in the tomb, I believe he had a desire to be better. He had a desire. Do you have a desire to have what God had for you today? Has it wet your appetite just a little bit? Wet your appetite. We went last week, you know, went up to, uh, to the rental service, Chuck's service. We, on the way back, we stopped at Bucky's. I don't know if you've ever been to Bucky's or not. Gas was two ninety one. We went in. I could smell stuff when we went in. They had cinnamon roll that big around. I said, get thee behind me, Satan. And I didn't get one. But all the way home, I kept talking about that cinnamon. I could still smell that cinnamon roll. Debbie said, you want to just turn around and go back? I was tempted. I mean, tempted. God wet your appetite and you walk out of here and you think, man, I almost went. I almost I still taste that thing, and I hadn't even had a bite yet. We have a desire to have it. Satan wants to take it away. There's so many people that wanted it. And praise the Lord, there's so many people that got it. Praise the Lord for those who got it. You know what David said? I, I need to move on real quick. It said, verse 13, it said, Then 
will I teach transgressors the way. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness. Murder is what that means. Oh, God. God, can he forgive a murderer? David was a murderer. But God forgave him. Thy God of my salvation, he saved him. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and broken contrite heart. O God, without desire. He wants us broken today. Do you feel broken today? Realizing we, we are nothing. We don't have the joy that God has, but we can taste it and we want it. We desire it. God offers it. He said once we do those things, we can do great things. We can teach. We can sing. It's time to be broken. Let God break our heart. Don't be hard-hearted and push him away. Remember Gideon? He called Gideon, I want you to go out and fight in this battle. No, Gideon said, I just don't want to do that, God. He said, I want you to go. And, and I, I, I looked it up. Praise God for Google. I asked how many Midianites was in that army, and it said more than 135,000 men. More than 135,000. Well, God, Gideon said to God, well, okay, where's my army? We looked out there, and there were 32,000 guys. That's one guy to 42 of the enemy. One to 42. Gideon says, I don't know about them odds. Don't know. God said, if you don't like them odds, you ain't going to like the next ones I'm going to give you. He said, you've got too many folks to go and fight. You got too many? You got too many? Woo, I, I think that's about Brenda Mountain Baptist Church. Think about all the folks and all the people moving in here. We're just a small church. Oh, God likes small things to do big things, doesn't he? God likes to do big things and small things. He got him down to 300 people. 300. Them odds went from 42 to 1 to 450 to 1. 450 to 1. He said, now you're ready. Now you're ready. And what did old Gideon do? do? He got out and and he went out there, as the Lord told him, he had a pitcher in his hand, a light in the side of the pitcher, and a trumpet in his hand. And what did he do? He broke the pitcher so that the light could shine. He broke the pitcher. So the light shined, and it sounded the trumpet. Because the sword of the Lord in a Gideon is come. Oh, he was standing in the power of God. In closing, I just want to read another passage from Psalm 30, verse 3. It says, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks to the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth for a moment, and his favor in his life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Maybe God has broken you. Maybe you're going through valleys right now. But with the Lord, joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Jesus was going to the cross. But joy was going to come in the morning. People were persecuting him. In fact, the Lord... His father was going to have to turn his back because he held my sins and yours. But joy had come in the morning. We just celebrated Easter morning. But God has a desire for this morning to be a great morning. So before we take of the Lord's Supper, I want us to evaluate our hearts and our lives. Are we broken like he wants us? Are we have that kind of heart? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful 
before we partake of the Lord's Supper today. You tell us to do that and be faithful in it. Lord, I realize you're coming back and we're going to partake of it with you. But today we want to honor your sacrifice, your brokenness, how your body was broken for us, how you shed your blood. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we don't take this lightly today. We take our responsibilities seriously today. And I pray, Lord, that your will be done in our lives. I pray that you restore unto us what we need. I pray if there's one here today that we need to do something to prepare our hearts better today. I pray, Lord, that we'll do that before we take the Lord's Supper. I pray that you'll touch our hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen. If you'll stand with me real quickly. We're going to just give a quick invitation before we take the Lord's Supper. But if there's something you need to do right where you stand, I invite you to do so. If you need to lay it on the altar, I ask you to do so. If you need me to pray with you, I'll stand right here with you. But you prepare your hearts today. Let us sing. Quick, that's the very first verse. You need to come. You need to pray right where you're at. Just bow your head and say, Lord, I, I want to make sure I'm where I ought to be today. I want to honor you today. I want my heart broken. I want your word to grow. be seated and I invite the deacons to come forward at this time as we get ready to take the Lord's Supper. All believers here today, you're welcome to join us as we take the Lord's Supper because it is a he asked us, commands us to do so. Mary's coming. Are you coming? Oh, we went to get the kids. Now, this is a special time. A lot of people, we, we take things lightly. This is not something just to do to be doing it. We need to recognize what the Lord's done. The sacrifice that he has made. There's no way to understand in our human bodies for what he's sacrificed for us. At this time, as Mary's coming, I'll ask um, Don if you would, if you'll pray for our bread before we hand it out. Father, we do, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to, to, uh, to break the bread of life, Lord, to, to honor you, Lord, to do this, Lord, to... Uh, to remember just how almighty you are. And uh, we do love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
talking about broken this morning. This is what the Lord did. He broke his life for us, his body. He said, this do in remembrance of me. Bentley, would you uh, bless our Jews at this time? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, for at this time we celebrate your Lord and your sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary. On this day, we bless this event that which was going to be your blood, the blood that was going to wipe away all the sin in the world if they will just turn and run to you and give, give their life to you so that way you could wipe them clean and use them to bring to bring out to sow out your new kingdom to be good stewards of your kingdom right now we show this in the singing of this drink that we're about to serve right now and let this represent your blood the blood that my sin and all the sin was dropping out when you was on Calvary. These things we pray in your son's awesome name, Jesus. Amen.
Jesus um, fed the 5,000. He said he broke the bread and handed them out. It increased. When uh, Jesus' body was broken for us, blood spilled out to cover us all and all of our sins. He said, this do in remembrance of me. After they did that, if you'll stand together, we'll be dismissed with a song. What is it? Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul.